In this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know about the decision-making section of the UCAT, and then we'll look at how you can score highly. Hi, welcome back. My name's Dr. Ashley Hilton, and in this FutureDoc channel, we teach you how to make your application to medical school absolutely bulletproof. And today, we're gonna to give you all of the information that you need to know to succeed in this decision-making section of the UCAT exam. So before we start, let's have a look what UCAT themselves say about this particular section. The decision-making subtest assesses your ability to apply logic to reach a decision or conclusion evaluate arguments and analyze statistical information. Doctors and dentists are often required to make decisions in situations that may be complex. This requires high level problem solving skills and the ability to assess and manage risk and deal with uncertainty. So you can think of this section more as kind of a logical reasoning section. And this looks at three basic areas. The first is to use logic to arrive at correct conclusions. The second is the ability to analyze data in different formats. And the third is your ability to analyze different arguments. Because of the nature of the decision making, it combines lots of different areas. So I would recommend that you go away and practice the verbal reasoning and the quantitative reasoning before attempting this section. So let's take a moment to have a look at the format of this section. So unlike other questions, you will actually have one question stem followed by one question. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio rather than the others, which are kind of normally a one-to-four or something similar. The majority of the questions will be a passage followed by four options, or less frequently, you do get questions where you have one stem followed by five yes or no answer questions. This section has 29 questions and they might be in the format of tables, charts, graphs and maybe some quite abstract ways of presenting the data. The timing, you get your customary one minute at the start to compose yourself, then it's 31 minutes to answer these 29 questions, which makes it about 64 seconds per question. Let's take a quick moment to look at the question types that you're going to get. Firstly, before we do that, we need to look at the broad subject areas that we're going to cover. And those are mainly basic arithmetic, probability and statistics, and then things like Venn diagrams. But the actual question types will come under three broad subject areas. About a third will be on the subject of evaluating arguments and under that will come recognizing assumptions, interpreting information and then drawing conclusions from that. The second area is deductive reasoning and within that we have logical puzzles and syllogisms. Now if this is something that you're not familiar with you can always check out my online course where we do a deep dive on every single one of these aspects so that you know exactly what kind of questions are going to come up and exactly how to answer them. The third broad type is statistics and figural reasoning. And within that, you get Venn diagrams and probabilities. So I've probably thrown a load of words at you there that don't really mean much, but don't worry, we're gonna go through examples of all of those in subsequent videos and some example questions. So what are my tips for doing well in this section? Well, the first thing is it's a really important section to work smart in. And that means deciding at the start, taking a step back, looking at what the question is asking and deciding what you actually need to calculate. It's very tempting to go in and do loads of calculations when actually, if you take a step back and look what you're actually being asked, you can save a lot of time by realizing that you probably only need to calculate a small segment of the information that's given to you. This is the section where you'll probably most likely need to use your marker and pen that's provided just to help you work out schematically what's going on. One of the ways to prepare for this is to revise things like probability, know your arithmetic again, and Venn diagrams really helps you go quicker and understand these a lot easier. You may also want to look at some basic critical thinking. Now, these will pay dividends if you're also sitting the B because this is the section that most resembles the logical reasoning section of that exam. But by far the most important tip is, as I said before, to take a moment to work out what you actually need to know in the question. And as I said, if you wanna go deeper, you can check out the description where I have a link to my UCAT course, but otherwise you can check out some more free videos in this playlist here where we have loads of UCAT examples, questions, and things you can try. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in either of those two places where we'll be going through some more examples and going through all of this in a lot more depth.